Hi guys, welcome to my beautiful back alley here at Formaggio Kitchen. Uh, we're going to talk today about making a spice rub for some ribs. We do uh, barbecue every Saturday out on the sidewalk. Bon Appetit thinks it's pretty good. They call this one of the 10 best restaurants, even though we're not a restaurant. Um, so, I guess we'll just get right into it here. The rub is nine ingredients. Uh, you can get these anywhere. They're not special. You don't have to shop here to get them. It's some Hungarian sweet paprika. I'd say that's about a cup, maybe. Some chili powder. And make sure that's real chili powder, because chili with an eye powder is often a blend of garlic and cumin and chili. This is California chili, which is guajillo chili, pure powder. Brown sugar, that's the sweet part. Ground yellow mustard. Cayenne pepper. Celery seed with just a little bit of a buzz grind on it, just a little bit. Salt, you need lots of salt. Cumin, I love cumin, so I overdo it. Cumin uh, is the great Mexican flavor, of course. It's when you want Mexican food, what you really want is cumin. And freshly ground black pepper. You put all that in a bowl, and you just kind of, with your hand, just mix it up. The funny thing about rub is that uh, it does not taste good on its own. If you were to eat this right now, you would not like it. Just get it mostly, mostly ready, kind of all incorporated, as good as you can. Break up the little bits of brown sugar that always happen, always. And that's rub. So this obviously made kind of a lot of rub. We're just putting it on a couple racks of ribs. A good idea is to put it in a mason jar, label it barbecue rub, poke some holes in the top, like ready-made shaker, and then you have barbecue rub anytime you need barbecue rub. Really good on scrambled eggs. So here's our nice rack of ribs. Competition style would say you want to get like the most square one you have with the fewest amount of like odd little pockets of silver and weird colors. So this is a pretty good cut. One thing I want to talk about that a lot of people don't do when they like make ribs in their backyard is to take off this skin. It's really easy. You just stick the old paring knife under there. Be careful not to cut yourself. If you take it off behind the bone, behind like two ribs, you should be able to just to reach under there. And if you're lucky, if you got a nice good rib that's kind to you, it should just pull off in one big sheet. Like so. And you definitely want to take this off because this is like pure collagen. And it won't, in the cooking process, it definitely won't break down. And when you go to take your nice bite of what you think is a nice tender rib, you'll get that, that like gross thing you got to pull. So just by taking it off, you save a lot of trouble and you make a nice tender cut. little schmear of mustard, get your hands right in it. Barbecue is fun because you get to play with your hands the whole time. Okay. Some people should say you should just dust the rub on. I disagree. I say go for it. You don't necessarily have to rub it in so much because the next step after this is to smoke it, and a rub is not really a marinade. A rub is it's kind of a rub. It's kind of a flavor. It really has no chance to get inside the meat like a marinade would. So you don't have to like refrigerate it overnight. You just kind of have to get it on there, throw it on the grill, and it'll smoke for like two hours, and then we cook it. So this is probably a bigger grill than you guys have in your backyards. Uh, this is kind of a monster. But you can definitely turn your backyard grill into a smoker, and here's how. You build kind of a medium-sized fire, mostly charcoal, a little bit of wood, and let it burn down till, it's, till the coals are gray, till it like, looks like it's a fire that could not cook anything, much less hurt you. The rule of thumb that they use is if you can hold your hand five inches above the surface of the grate, 
for five seconds, then you're at about 200 degrees. And that's a good temperature to cook at. The process we do is not cooking, it's just smoking. We're just getting the smoke flavor in there. So it's a small little pile of coals. You want to place the slab on there with the fat side up. So the, the side you can see the bones, that's down. And what will happen is as the, as the meat warms up, the, melt, the fat will start to melt and it'll carry the rub down through the meat. So we got that on there. I got some apple chips soaking in apple juice. Um, my rub is very sort of peppery and I like to couple that with some apples. So just kind of give them a decent drain. Load them in. It'll start to make a pretty good smoke. Might want to poke it a little. My high-tech poker. Usually when I do this, I do a couple pork butts, a couple beef briskets, a bunch of racks all at once. But for today, we're just going to do the one. Show you. Show you how it's done. So once you feel like it's definitely going to start smoldering, start to go, you don't need to worry about it. You can just kind of close the top and keep the top open just the tiniest bit. The fire will die uh, if it doesn't have enough oxygen. It's not a big fire. It doesn't need a lot of oxygen. So being open just a little bit should do it. You want smoke to move over the meat. You don't want it to like encase the meat and not move. It's like this creates sort of like a poor man's convection. Like it pressure up here kind of pulls the smoke out. So you want the smoke to be moving over the meat. It gets kind of bitter and acrid if you don't do that. If you just like make a chamber with no way for anything to move around. So we're gonna give this smoke for about an hour and a half, two hours. Again, it's not cooking, so it doesn't have to be hot. In fact, you don't really want it to start cooking at this stage. Just, just getting a smoke flavor. All right, so when you pull your rack off the smoker, it shouldn't appear too cooked, it shouldn't be burned. The rub hasn't really caramelized yet, just took in some smoke flavor. So I'm gonna show you uh, what a purist would tell you is kind of a cheating method. It's a combination of like oven rib and grill rib. Kind of this would be the way that caterers do it because they don't have all day to maintain a grill and sit there watching it all day. So one good tip is get, cut up some apples and marinate them in some vinegar. And you want to put those on top of and under the ribs. And the apples have like just enough citric acid in them to start breaking down the collagen, which is what the cooking process does too, breaks down the collagen, makes a tough cut of meat, a really edible cut of meat. Just kind of spread them on there. Ribs are not necessarily a real fatty cut, so it definitely needs some liquid, it needs a braising liquid. And for that, I just use the vinegar that I'm already marinating these apples in. Just a little bit, you don't need to swim it. Just give it some kind of liquid. Give it a good wrap. This is a cheese shop, so we, know, we all know how to do a butcher wrap. Butcher wrap has two folds in it. It really locks in. So this rack you'll put in your oven, preheated hopefully to about 250 degrees. And it's gonna cook for two and a half, three hours. You might wanna bump it up to 275 if you feel like you have the kind of oven that doesn't cook regular like I do at home. The ones we have here at the shop are real good. So this is our rack of ribs that I just pulled out of the oven. It's been in there for about two hours. You can give it, there's two ways to tell whether it's done. First way is the meat has started to pull back from the bones a little bit and those bones are exposed. Second way to tell is something I like to call like the, the fold test. You know, if it's starting to pull apart, like there, with this fold starting to pull right off the bone, then it's probably ready to go. So at this point, I pull off all the 
apples that are there. You can leave them there as a presentation piece, but they get kind of brown and, I don't know, brown looking apples on top of my rack of ribs is not, not really what I'm after. So all this liquid that's left here in the foil, that's just gonna go right into the sauce. That's the good stuff. There's a lot of good flavor in that. Same with anything. Same with pork butts, chicken, anything you're cooking. Any drippings you have laying around, add them right to the sauce. So, at this step, we're just gonna paint the ribs a little bit with this sauce. both sides. So there's a lot of brown sugar in the rub, but there's even more in the in the sauce, so this brown sugar should brown up a little bit on the grill. And this step we're at now is just it's just the finishing step. Just throw them on there maybe 10 minutes each side. Get good grill marks, it'll brown up nice. And this is a this is a fire more like the fire you would have if you were like making hot dogs and hamburgers, kind of a nice hot direct flame fire that you can't really be anywhere near because it'll burn you. So don't mess around with it too much. Kind of let it do its thing. So here's our finished rack. So you can see the the glaze that I just applied sort of charred a little bit in the fire, which is what you want because it means that the rub. The brown sugar and the rub caramelized, so now there's like this awesome sweet candy coating to the rib. Before I serve it, I'd probably just give it one more little brush. Because you can never really over sauce something, I think. Like so. And you can present it just like that.